as long as you have all your documents right as long as you have confirmed whatever needed for you you have no business of paying any money at the immigration on your arrival i've been watching some videos of people that are visiting kenya for the first time especially like travelers uh, the people youtubers and these people are getting ripped off at the airport so of course when you are a foreigner you don't want anyone to call police on you you're just going to shut it you're just going to keep quiet and just let it pass always leave your important documents or important stuff back in your hotel or wherever you're staying nairobi is not bad jet planes in the night sky with you Getting high in the sunrise with you Getting through all the bad times with you I wasn't missing a thing, no, I do And I wish that I could be hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel it's your girl gracie d i hope you guys are doing amazing i'm doing good here in nairobi kenya the pride of africa the home of safaris and of course the jewel of east africa you all already know nairobi is the only city the only capital city in the whole world with a national park in the city like when you are the KICC on the top you can actually see the Nairobi National Park if you're coming across this channel for the first time my good name is Grace I do travel content creation I'm trying to travel to African countries each country at a time trying to learn the different cultures the different uh questions that we have in africa the different traditions and also trying to learn each other because we are all africans so i've been to rwanda and of course showcasing the development of our continent because most people think that africa is poor but it's because of lack of knowledge and also i would say ignorance so that Can you name a city in africa what name a city in africa they're hungry do you think they're thinking about what <laughs> cities oh, yeah. in africa but i'm trying so hard to bring our continent on the map every country that i travel to and try to showcase the beautiful neighborhoods and you know not the ghettos we all have ghettos in every country in the world we all have poor people in you know but so we're trying to do this differently trying to put africa on the map and trying to change the african narrative so if you're coming across this channel for the first time please uh, subscribe that is all i'm gonna ask you also, also don't forget to like the video on the comment section tell me where you're watching this video from which country which uh city in kenya which town in kenya which village or whichever city you're watching from in the world so i know most people want to visit nairobi or want to visit kenya but really don't know the basics that you need to know when you're traveling because traveling ain't easy when you know nothing first of most of us go to google or you know try to search in, on things but there's those specific things that you really want to know but you never get to like get to know what you're supposed to do until you get to a certain country so on today's episode we're going to talk of things that you should you know know before getting to nairobi uh before landing in nairobi city things that you're supposed to do and of course after landing and also if you're coming over land there are still things that you're supposed to know so this is uh, on today's episode that is all that we're going to talk about i'm going to enlighten you on those little things that you should know when visiting nairobi and to make your life easier here to make your travel easy and you get to enjoy so on the first one that i'm gonna to start with is kenyan visa in african countries as our president said he's trying to make 
Kenyan visa free for all Africans and people in the diaspora. We are still waiting for that. There are specific countries that visit Kenya on visa free, mostly the East African, like Rwanda, there is Tanzania, there is Uganda. Like you don't need a visa, you just need to either bring your national ID, your passport or your temporary passport. And yeah, those are the three that I'm sure of, but there are so many other countries that visit Kenya on visa free. For those people that require a visa to visit Kenya, you need to get your visa online. We don't have visa on arrival in Kenya. So before traveling to Kenya, if you're planning your visit to Kenya, from your country, you don't even need to visit the embassy. It's been made so easy for you guys. Just go on your laptop, go on your computer, go on your phone, whichever method that you want to use. Or if you don't have all that and your phone maybe can't work, you can visit a cyber in your country and go to the Kenyan visa government and fill in your visa. You're going to pay around 50 US dollars for the visa and your visa will be granted within one working day or two working days so no if you need a visa to visit kenya you need to get your visa pre all visiting kenya we don't have visas on arrival on the second thing that i want to make sure about this it's making a you know hard for us travelers when you're traveling in african countries as long as you have all your documents right as long as you have confirmed whatever needed for you you have no business of paying any money at the immigration on your arrival the passport controls area when you have everything right so before traveling to kenya make sure google check out ask someone that have been in kenya that you've seen maybe you follow them on social media what are the requirements that i do i need to visit kenya everything is there on google because i'm really like also trying to like make it easy for any traveler that want to explore africa and the world so don't pay any bribe at the immigration or other passport control areas because it's free as long as you have the visa and you have all the requirements all they need to do is check on you check where you're gonna stay all the requirements that needed you don't need to pay any extra cash for you to be allowed in the country you've already paid for your visa that's all needed for you to pay because I've seen so many people complaining. I've watched it happen as I was traveling and the immigration officers trying to get a bribe from travelers, trying to give them a hard time getting in the country or trying to get out of the country. So you have to be firm. They're not going to deport you as long as you've not done anything wrong. Trust me they are just trying to scare you and they're just trying to make everything hard for you and it makes me very angry because it's giving bad experience to people who are visiting kenya for the first time and they are there asking for a hundred dollars to some people i know a hundred dollars is nothing to you but when you're traveling you need that money a hundred dollars you can do a lot with this here in kenya that's money that you're gonna go out and enjoy see places it's good food visit nice restaurants here in nairobi so be firm make sure that you have all your documents right that you don't end up paying a bribe for nothing you don't end up giving a hundred dollars for nothing and this i would say let it apply to all african countries stand firm let no one confuse you don't be scared as long as you know you have everything right so on the next point that i'm going to talk about is uh, when you get in kenya mostly for the people from the west for these developed countries that you guys have wi-fi everywhere kenya we have very good internet connection we have very stable uh connection or internet connection 
but we don't have wi-fi on the streets like maybe people from america do have so when you get at the airport i would advise you try and get yourself a local sim card i would advise you to get a safari com the network is stable doesn't matter which part of the country you are in with this safari comp sim card you can opt to get a one month package whereby you're going to have unlimited data unlimited phone calls and also unlimited sms so that will be mostly good for you when you want to use the wi-fi or you want to use data you want to be online i would advise that it's cheap for a monthly package i get i bet you get it at 20 us dollars that's roughly around 3000 kenyan shillings and all you need is just your passport that's all you of course you're gonna get this after you know you've finished with the passport control area because they also like check your visa and you know and everything else so do yourself a favor and get yourself a safaricom sim card when you come in kenya you can get it from the airport if you're coming to kenya overland and you are alighting in nairobi city we have so many safaricom shops where you can get yourself a sim card and this is going to be very helpful because when you have this sim card you don't need to use just the roadside taxis we have ubers in kenya so let's say you've just come in Kenya and your internet is not working here and you need to call an Uber. You just need to go online, call an Uber, which is very pocket friendly compared to our local taxis. So another thing, especially when you're coming from the airport, I've been watching some videos of people that are visiting Kenya for the first time, especially like travelers, uh, the people, YouTubers, and these people are getting ripped off at the airport you know like when you're trying to get to your hotel or your airbnb or maybe you're going to stay with a friend just make it easy for yourself and call an uber it doesn't even take five minutes for uber to get there because they're always uber roaming around the airport because you know the JKI is a very busy airport so there's so many ubers around so for a place that you probably supposed to pay ten dollars you end up paying roughly thirty dollars when you ask or you just get a random local taxi it's okay if you have that money i'm telling this for budget travelers like me if you want to pay the thirty dollars then well and good that is up to you and of course, I know the fuel prices have gone up, but of course, they're also supposed to give people like reasonable prices. You know, I saw somebody who paid three times the money that they could have paid or the money that they should pay for the distance that they were going to. And I was like, oh man, these are rip off. Like, it's okay. I know they're trying to make ends meet. They're trying to make money. And you know, so... That is just something i just said no i'm gonna talk about this on my video so if you visit kenya uber is really really working here in kenya very easy to access and it's um uber goes to almost other places that you want to go especially around nairobi city and outskirts of nairobi so when you get at the airport and you already have your sim card maybe your connection is not working just call an uber and they're going to come and pick you you know at the at the gate actually like just where you get out after finishing with all the visa process and yeah so another thing is as you all know we have the expressway in nairobi kenya i know to some people it's not nothing new because like you have all those tolls uh, some people call them tolls in their countries like from america and maybe uk or other places yeah so for you to use the expressway you'll have to pay 300 kenyan shillings that is from the airport to the last exit that you it depends with of, of 
it depends with where you're going but from the airport let's say to town from the airport to westland from the airport to kilimani kilelishwa you're just going to pay 300 kenyan sh so it's gonna be your uber price plus the 300 kenyan shillings because the driver is not going to get up for that you yourself if you want to use the expressway you have to pay three thousand at 300 kenyan shillings and i'll advise you just do it for the experience it's very amazing you don't have to get stuck in traffic yeah and you're going to enjoy the experience another thing i know when we are traveling is we want to try the nightlife clubbing there are so many spots nice spots for you to party in nairobi like nairobi is a party town i would call it or i would say so so if you are there clubbing and you're just meeting uh people or strangers women uh be careful with your drinks i had a friend of mine whose drink was put something and they lost conscious and it was very hard for me so you have to be careful also who you're partying with don't just see any pretty girl and you're like yeah today is my day bro you just have to be careful because you don't know what their plans are and you know it's just weird how people just meet in clubs and like guys you guys are just so weird the man like we're just meeting club and because you feel like you like my physical look you don't even know a thing about me and you really need to take me to your hotel or your airbnb or whichever place that you're staying in you just have to be very careful because you don't know what my intentions are you have to watch out your drink when you party in don't just leave your drink on the table with people that you know nothing about yeah and also this goes to the ladies if you're out there partying and you're visiting nairobi and you're just by yourself don't leave your drink on the table with someone that you know nothing about and i would say this would should be everywhere that you're visiting because people always are, people are not always as good as you are just because you're good doesn't mean that anyone else is good or they have just because someone looks like they have good intentions it's always good to be careful i always drink my beer direct from the bottle if i'm just patting by myself and i always have it on my hands yeah so you just have to be careful out there oh there's also this one thing if you're coming in nairobi to stay i mostly let this go to the mombasa area because when you visit nairobi you also want to visit mombasa and experience the beach life out there book your places on air b and b if you're not like booking a hotel or whichever way don't talk to anyone on airbnb and want to make a deal on the side this happened to me when i went to mombasa and i wanted to make a video about it we booked a place in mombasa and the lady convinced my friend to pay the place offline via mpesa so there was no way that we were gonna show like or had evidence that we booked this place on airbnb so that means when you pay on the side or you make a deal on the side you don't have airbnb protection from airbnb and that's why they always tell you don't book off the site don't make side deals i know it's a way of them trying to make money unless you know the person that's going to host you or unless this person has hosted you before you can book like one night on airbnb and if you want to extend now you can make a deal on the site but for the first time i'll always advise you this is how i do it always book the first the first and the second night on airbnb at least you have protection you get to see the place and get to see the services that are offered to you then afterwards, if the person is cool with you, if everything is okay with you, then you can choose to make a deal on the side. So we went to this Airbnb in Mombasa. My friend paid via M-Pesa. Like on the side, we actually paid the same amount that was being asked on the side. So on the side, everything, 
every utility was paid for so when we booked on mpesa oh my goodness the first night we the first time that we got there we, my friends cooked i got there later at night and when i got there we were supposed we went out clubbing and we came back only to turn the lights on and the lights turned off within a period of five minutes for those who know mombasa you can't survive in mombasa without a fan and ac at least a fan it was very hot we are calling this lady she's not picking we were three of us we called with my friend's number she didn't pick my other friend called with her number she didn't pick i called with my number because she didn't know who was calling and she picked and she lied to me that she was in the chat and then the guy from the place like you know the soldier or the caretaker tried to call the lady she picked and she told the guy to tell us that he couldn't reach her and i was there listening to everything and i was very angry because she didn't want to pay the electricity like that was a rip off for us because it was all inclusive when we booked the place everything was made clear so i was very mad at her and i called her complaining and i was angry i called her as karma and she was like i'm going to call the police on you and i was like okay then go on and call them because i've clearly done nothing wrong but i did talk to some people and i was told that is how she does it and this is something common in mombasa of, of course when you are a foreigner you don't want anyone to call police on you you're just going to shut it you're just going to keep quiet and just let it pass but for me because i'm kenyan oh damn i i i was ready for them to come and tell me what's wrong that i've done actually if i still can find the screenshot of the messages that we had with her i'll screenshot it and put it here and she then started insulting me like she was very petty so if you're booking a place here in nairobi or in mombasa or anywhere in kenya just do it on airbnb just to have the protection i know we want to save a bit of coins but at the end of it all you don't want your trip to be spoiled with just trying to save like five dollars ten dollars twenty dollars you're there to enjoy and you're on vacation you're on a trip you need to enjoy so it's not worth it at all unless you know someone very well and unless someone is like maybe an influencer whereby you can you know because influencers or youtubers or you know people that are known it's easy for you to just take it online and they don't want that they don't want to mess with your with their brand yeah so if you're working my place just do it on airbnb especially the airbnbs be careful so on the next part is always leave your important documents or your inter important stuff back in your hotel or wherever you're staying nairobi is not bad as people try to make it like you know they call it nairobi Nairobi is not that bad. It's actually very safe in Nairobi. It's always that they always those in a sack. There are always the few rotten potatoes. So you might think that, especially like for ladies who carry sling bags across your your neck, or I don't know, but always make sure that you leave your documents, things like your passport uh things like you you are traveling you're traveling documents so there was this lady who was traveling in kenya and she got her pass snatched along gong road and that was crazy but that guys later got caught i don't know what happened so like if you need to like go around with your passport just make a copy of your passport the first page of your passport and also make a copy of your visa just a photocopy that's enough for you to walk around with you can also maybe carry your um, 
your home like id i don't know how you call them back in your country but we call them ids here in kenya you have to be careful doesn't matter whether you are in westlands whether you are in kilimani ngong road dika kibra just be careful and especially mostly watch out for the when you see two motorbikes guys that are like you know just always trust your guts and be careful for you not to be snatched another thing is be careful when people like approach you on the streets and they're like i'm so and so maybe you are taking photos maybe you are making a video of yourself maybe because you're working they can tell you are a foreigner and they approach you and they're like i'm so and so on the streets just assume them just the other day a guy was robbed actually a kenyan by people who pretended to be police officers and the first thing if you are a police officer the first thing i'm gonna ask is when i've done nothing wrong and when someone has not called police on me i want to see your id especially when they're in civilian clothes how can i tell you that you are a police officer i can't and these people they'll target anyone this also goes out to my kenyan brothers and sisters don't just be scared by anyone just because they've said they are a police officer when you have done nothing wrong if you are in your, in your civilian's clothes how can i tell that you are a police officer so you have to be very careful who approaches you and who they claim to be and especially for the content creators because most people are targeting the phones they're targeting your cameras and your gadgets so be very careful out there on the streets with whoever approaches you if need to be scream and run just to be on the safe side i'm not trying to scare you i'm just trying to and this goes actually also to kenyans because there's right now there are so many content creators out there and people have these amazing gadgets they have all these equipment you have to be very careful with your equipment yeah and of course your documents when you're traveling always leave everything in the hotel or in the apartment also forgot to mention this when you're out clubbing don't pay a bill when you haven't seen your receipts every club here in kenya they give you receipts for receipts for what you've taken we got ripped off like four bottles of beers that we didn't take just because we didn't ask for a receipt with my friends so for this not to happen to you ask for your receipt it doesn't matter how classy high-end bougie the place looks because you don't know the person who is working there what are their intentions if the intentions are to rip you off always ask for your receipt before you pay for anything for me i said i'll always ask for a receipt even if it's about not of water that i'm paying for let them think that i'm cheap or something i don't care at the end of it all i'm just trying to you know to be careful with whatever that i'm paying and the lady really denied that and i was like we're not drunk we know what we've taken we know what we've ordered and when we asked for the receipt she's like no i can't find the other receipt but you ordered this how and like these are like computerized receipts they're not receipts that you just write like if you need to like you can go and check whatever you ordered for us because of course it's under your name like that is how it works in bars and hotels for the waiters and we were just like uh, it's fine there's nothing we can do we've already paid for the money so we are not ready to start a fight we just for a few coins but i really felt bad because that 10 shillings that you like it's only 10 shillings is what makes 100 when you add another 10 and another 10 that 100 is what adds up to 1000 when you add 100 and 100 that is like 
for me it matters for you it might not but for me so i'm just telling you to be careful if it does matter to you like it does matter to me so on the last one on this episode it's going to be if possible always make sure that you shop from the supermarket because i've seen people complaining of being ripped off the good thing when you're shopping from a store is that you have the price displayed there and at the end of it you're going to get a receipt receipt so instead of you complaining and that you've been ripped off you know when you could have easily gone to the store shop and enjoy your stay but if you don't mind it's not everyone that rips you off in Nairobi and of course you have the right to bargain if you feel something is expensive especially mostly when you go to the market like when you're going to buy from you know like you're going to buy clothes or something that you've just seen on the streets you you can bargain if you are good at it because almost everything in Kenya is bargainable and of course almost everything not everything yeah so if you don't want to complain and you want to enjoy your trip here especially for groceries it's easily to get them from the store we have like local stores here we have quick mart we have naivas and the good thing with these two stores they are almost in every neighborhood that we, neighborhood that we have in nairobi we also have international stores like we have chandarana we also have kafo there are so many stores for you to shop at here in nairobi kenya and also other parts of kenya you always find a store anywhere even in the most places that you be like i don't think they have a store here even in the village areas so guys this is going to be the end of this episode i hope you guys have enjoyed i'm planning to bring you more of these topics where you get to learn more of kenya things that you need to know before visiting kenya i'll always keep you updated if you watched this video and you haven't subscribed to this channel please consider subscribing also on the comment section tell me what you want to know about kenya tell me what you want me to verify when you're visiting kenya also tell me where you're watching from we are road to 4,000 subscribers i can't wait to hit that milestone i'm so grateful for the support that you guys are you know giving me i don't take any of it for granted i really appreciate it so till the next episode bye and thank you for watching